So this time last year, I made a video called A Consumer's Rant About Destiny 2. I sat at my kitchen table, I set up my mobile phone and I just spoke for nearly half an hour about the state of the game and how I was hoping things would change. Well, we're nearly a year later at this point. I'm no longer at my kitchen table, I'm at my desk. I'm not speaking at my phone, I've got my normal recording set up. So I personally have moved on quite drastically. But then, so has Destiny 2. Since that rant, we've had the Season of Arrivals, we have had the Beyond Light content launch, we have had Season of the Hunt, and we're now towards the end of Season of the Chosen. And things feel... different. Is it a positive difference? Well, you're going to have to stick around for the rest of the video. Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon, and this is my thoughts on the state of Destiny 2 in 2021. So full disclosure, I have been playing Destiny 2 since the alpha, so around May or June 2014. I've been playing Destiny through all of the content releases, through all of the content droughts, through all of the highs, through all of the lows. I've taken very seldom breaks from it. There was one in 2018 when I moved house and didn't have uh, internet for a few weeks, months. And there was one at the beginning of Beyond Light, simply because I felt like I needed one. So, I've got a lot of playtime in this franchise. Across multiple different platforms, I have played on xCloud Gaming, I have played on Stadia, I have played on GeForce Now, and the majority of my time has been spent on PlayStation 4 and 5. So, yeah, it's obviously a good game. That's one thing we should get out of the way straight away. Destiny 2 is a good game. Jumping into it, playing the content that is put out there, whatever that content may be, whatever you choose to do with your time in the game, it's good. And with where we are right now at the end of Season of the Chosen, I would say it's very good. You see, this season changed things up a little bit. Previous seasons, we've had some story moments in. We've had moments of brilliant storytelling, but then massive gaps before the next bit. One of the best ones I could probably think of would be Season of the Worthy, where Saint-14 re-enters the fray. We save him, even though his fate was sealed earlier in our own timeline. So... We know that this franchise can tell good stories. We've seen The Taken King, we've seen Forsaken. I really like the Shadowkeep story. But the seasons felt like they gave you a story moment at the beginning and then another story moment three months later. That's how I found things like the season of The Drifter. That's how I found things even like Season of Arrivals. Season of The Chosen did things a little bit differently. And I really hope it continues to do things that way moving forward. We got a little bit of story every single week. We've probably only had the same amount of story content as we would have got in any of those other seasons, but rather than front and back loading it, it was spread out over the first eight to ten weeks of the season. Considering a season's meant to last three months, which is roughly 12 to 13 weeks, that gives us quite a good amount of story. It also gives us time to digest it to find the secrets, to take everything in at a pace that is acceptable. That doesn't mean that you have to run through it so to avoid spoilers. It means that you're not trying to take in all of this content in one fell swoop and miss out on other things elsewhere in the gaming world. This was something that I mentioned last year. I mentioned that the FOMO feeling that Destiny's seasons were giving us in that year of Destiny meant that I was missing out on many other gaming moments. I missed the entirety of Season of the Hunt, and okay, I'm not going to get the Season Pass stuff, but the actual content is still there. I can still go and play that Season stuff if I so want to. 
I can still earn that season's title if I so want to. And that's good. Because it means, even though I took a break and played other games, I was lucky enough to get a PlayStation 5 at launch, so I picked up the likes of Spider-Man Miles Morales, I picked up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I picked up Immortals, Phoenix Rising, Bug Snacks, Astro's Playroom, all these other games that I was able to spend time with and not feel like I was missing anything in Destiny. And that's something that was missing this time last year. In that video, I said that I couldn't step away from the game, or I felt like I couldn't step away from the game. Now granted, this content will still go at some point, but it's around for a lot longer. It's around for a year, and it means that I can dip out, do other things, play other things, come in of a week, play the story content that this season has put out, play a little bit from the last season, and then go and play other things. It means that the side content that was being pushed as the seasonal activities, the lost sectors, the public events, aren't the main focus. They are there. They still have to be done as part and parcel of what you're up to. But because they are not the be all and end all, life just feels that bit better. In fact, life feels a lot better at this point in Destiny's lifespan. The story is advancing. The darkness is here. We have communed with the darkness and we are currently wielding its power in stasis. I really like stasis. I like the setup of the power of the lore behind it. I like how it is utilized in moment to moment gameplay. I personally don't feel that it's any form of a problem in PvP. But then I'm in the bottom 17% of PvP, so most of us can't aim for Toffee. So hey, maybe that's where you should be playing if you want to enjoy the PvP in this game. I like Stasis. I like the story setup that it brings. I like how it was introduced, and I like how it had a lot of longevity to it. To fully unlock the subclass took a lot of work, a lot of quests, and for me personally, because I took that big break around the time of Season of the Hunt and therefore Beyond Light's launch, it's lasted a long time. I'm still building my Stasis subclass. I'm still building how I want to play with Stasis. It's still new and fresh, and it's been out since November. We're now in April as I record this, so that's six months, and it's still fresh. That's a positive. That's a big positive. I do these particular videos, my feelings on Destiny 2, off the cuff. I don't script them like I do with my reviews, or say with my ranking of the Assassin's Creed videos and such. I do them off the cuff, I do them unscripted, I do them with raw how I feel at the moment. And whereas this time last year I could sit down and talk at my phone, for well over half an hour about things that I wanted to change, things that needed to be done better. I'm already struggling to come up with things to talk about. And that's a good thing. It's a bit of an annoying situation to find yourself in because if something's good, if something's positive, word of mouth doesn't spread anywhere near as quick or as far. If something's positive, you'll tell maybe three or four people. If something's negative, you'll tell up to 20. And I understand why you want people to avoid that negative experience that you've had. You want to save them and make sure that other people only have positive experiences within their life, at least over things that you have control over. But it's also wrong. If that's what we want, if we want people to have positive experiences, Surely we should be informing them of the positive experiences. So hey, this is me. This is me in April 2021, towards the end of Season of the Chosen in Destiny 2, saying pick up this game right now. Even if you don't pick up the Season Pass, even if you don't pick up the £10 Season Pass with additional content in it, if you just play the game for what it is right now, it's probably the best place it's ever been. 
even without stasis, without the Beyond Light content. It's in the best place it's ever been. There's better content out there, and I understand that there are gripes. The Content Vault, for example, the removal of locations and strikes and PvP and Gambit maps, the neutering of Gambit, I don't like the current version of it. I would much prefer a more Gambit Prime example. It's much more engaging to play. But overall, it's in a much better place than it's been, at least in the last two years. So yeah, this is me being overwhelmingly positive about Destiny 2 right now. I do hope the next season brings more of this storytelling methodology. I hope with the return of things like the Vault of Glass that there's a story reason behind it. I have no problem returning to old content, but give me a reason, like we had in The Taken King of Rise of Iron, to return to the Vault of Glass, to return to Crota's End. Like, give us reason to go into these locations. Give us purpose for what we're doing. And it might only be a couple of throwaway voice lines. But that purpose makes a big difference to the player. So I hope this positivity continues. I hope that it's growing season upon season. I know with the challenges that we still face working remotely, which probably aren't going away for the next 12 months or so, might make that not completely feasible. It might very much be a situation of we'll get an epic season, like we've had in Season of the Chosen, and then a lesser season, a lull season, so that the team have got time to rebuild and write and record and animate for the season thereafter. But I like where we're at right now. I enjoy playing Destiny. I want to play Destiny. The game makes me want to come back right now. And when I was talking in that consumer's rant 12 months ago, that wasn't really a feeling that I had. So they've done a massive amount of work, a hugely positive amount of work. And I'm very, very pleased that they've done so. And honestly, all the Bungie developers should be proud of themselves. So yeah, 12 months ago, a consumer's rant about Destiny 2. Now, Still probably a rant, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. Pick it up. Play it. Drop £10 on it and play the seasonal content. And experience the joy that I've had from this moment of Destiny 2. And in the meantime, thank you very much for your viewership. It does mean the absolute world that you come along for these sorts of things, listen to what I'm saying, and give me your feedback in the comments. How are you feeling about Destiny 2 if you're playing it? Has this video convinced you to maybe return if you're not? Or even pick it up for the first time? Otherwise, guys, thank you for your viewership. Do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications so that you know when new videos of all sorts go live, whether it's off-the-cuff thoughts like this, fully scripted reviews, or the Let's Plays and playthroughs. In the meantime, my name is Doragon. This is my latest feelings on Destiny 2 in Year 4. And until next time, folks, have yourselves a fantastic day, and take care. Mm.